What was the preclinical work that led to the proved trial of phase four multicenter observational trial for mechlorethamine, also known as Valclor gel? Valclor gel has a long history that goes back uh, to the 1940s when it was first actually FDA approved as a systemic agent for a variety of lymphomas um, to be given by IV. And then in the 1950s, mechlorethamine started being used topically for mycosis fungoides CTCL. Uh, and some of uh, my patients may remember in the beginning, it was compounded as an aqueous solution that you would dilute with water and paint on or as uh, a compounded ointment that you would get from your compounding pharmacy. But it still wasn't FDA approved officially yet. So um, in the mid 2000s, uh, a multicenter effort led by Dr. Stu Lesson uh, for a randomized controlled non-inferiority study among 13 centers was performed to look at um, a, a version of mechlorethamine, mechlorethamine gel, also known as Valclor, and compared it to the compounded ointment. And it showed that it was just as good as the compounded ointment with about a 40 to 50% overall response rate um, by MSWAT scores. Uh, and I was, um, I was a, a sub investigator on that trial. My colleague, Dr. Ruck was on that. Um, so since 2013, Valclor gel has been on the market um, and that's been great for our patients to have. But uh, we all became very interested in uh, what we call real world use of Valclor. Um, how are our patients using it? How are our doctors prescribing it? Were they prescribing it with other, other types of uh, therapies? Uh, and so we wanted to get more information about how it really was used in daily practice. Um, so that led to the trial um, called PROVE, which stands for Prospective Observational US-Based a study assessing outcomes, adverse events, treatment patterns, and quality of life uh, in patients with mycosis fungoides cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. What had to happen for this trial, the PROVE study, to occur? Like many efforts in our community, it was really, it took a village. Uh, so this uh, was a multi-center trial uh, it was first um, sponsored by Actillion, um, who uh, basically was the company that had um, the rights to Valclor, uh, and they were instrumental in constructing the protocol, as well as organizing all of us uh, CTCL experts to get involved. Um, it did uh, recruit 41 sites, um, both academic and community-based sites throughout the U.S., so it was a big effort, uh, and we needed to recruit um, 300 patients. Um, and so for um, our small uh, you know, community, that does take a little while. Um, and then uh, we had to construct a protocol, get it FDA, uh, get it approved by the FDA, uh, and then approved at all the different sites. And of course, um, ask our, our patients um, to enroll in it. Uh, so it was a big group effort, but it was real world. So uh, basically we enrolled patients who were already um, about, who were actively using Valclor and coming into the clinic. Uh, and then they would be um, asked whether they'd be interested in enrolling in this trial. Um, and then we would um, enter their information that we would normally collect during an, a clinic visit and submit it to um, the clinical trial uh, data uh, collectors. Um, and we asked all kinds of questions. How often were you using it? What stage disease? What other treatments were you on? What were your side effects? What, was your what were the effects on your quality of life? And we submitted questionnaires uh, to the patients and compiled this data. So it was a lot of information that we normally uh, would collect um, when we see you in clinic. What did we learn during the PROVE clinical trial? So this study was one of the biggest studies that we've conducted in a prospective observational way. Um, we enrolled 301 adult patients across 41 sites. It took us two years. Uh, and um, we found one interesting thing we found was that uh, we're not just using Valclor gel in early stage patients, but also patients with advanced disease are also using Valclor gel in addition to whatever systemic therapies they're on. Uh, we also learned that uh, patients are applying it mostly once a day, which is the recommended uh, application that was uh, studied in the original 2013 trial by Dr. Lesson. 
um, but it is also being utilized every other day, every three days, um, different dosing regimens likely ref reflecting the doctors giving recommendations to, um, to kind of manage side effects. And so what are the side effects? Well, similar to the previous trial, this phase four observational trial showed that this medicine is very safe. It's not absorbed systemically, but the main effects are local skin side effects, which include irritation, um, contact dermatitis, like an allergic contact dermatitis, itching, um, so local skin effects. Uh, and they actually were less frequent than seen in the 2013 study. Um, and that was very interesting to us. Um, in the 2013 study, about 20% of patients had to stop the study because of skin side effects. Uh, but in the PROOF study, um, we basically saw that um, the incidence of these uh, skin adverse events or side effects was less. Um, and that could be because um, these patients in the real world, they're not just on Valclor. They're also on topical steroids, phototherapy, uh, internal agents such as bexerotene and other types of systemic agents. So we did see a lot of uh, combination therapies that people were on. And it is possible that if you're on topical steroids as well as Valclor, that the irritant uh, and allergic uh, dermatitis side effects could be less. That's one, one hypothesis that we had. Uh, so we learned a lot in terms of how it's used. And I think probably the most gratifying thing was that um, the longer you use it, the better you get. So at the time to response, uh, which was uh, published recently this year in the American Journal of Clinical Dermatology, we learned that um, Valclor gel, the peak response, it actually can take 18 months of treatment before you see full responses um, in the real world. So remember, this is a real world study. It's different than an, a, a clinical trial um, when you get approval of an uh, agent. Um, so patience is key, uh, continuing to follow treatment, you know, for the long haul is key. And then finally, um, our quality of life questionnaires that we gave to patients showed that um, patients who responded to Valclor, um, their health-related quality of life did improve uh, based on what we call the Skindex 29 uh, questionnaire. Um, so we could see that not only did you get clinical responses um, to Valclor, but also quality of life improves if you respond to Valclor. Uh, so this real world study provided a lot of great information. So what's next with Valclor gel or meclorethamine gel? Now that we have an FDA approved agent um, since 2013, and now that we know that Valclor gel um, certainly can take a while to work, but can be safely combined with other therapies uh, and also improves quality of life. Um, we now have more objective data for what we've known for a long time, that Valclor gel is an important skin-directed therapy for CTCL, definitely for early stage patients, but also helpful for palliation or adjunctive care for advanced stage patients. Um, and now that it's FDA approved, insurance coverage is much easier uh, than previously. And so right now going forward, we'd like to, um, we'd like to try to explore um, other sort of combinations therapies with Valclor. Uh, we'd like to also explore long-term safety with Valclor and then um, try to understand um, whether any of the dosing regimens, um, if there's a recommended way to mitigate the skin side effects. Uh, and I think for me as a clinician, um, this real world study did help me a lot in terms of how to counsel patients and what to expect when you start Valclor as your treatment. Uh, and I think that knowing what to expect um, and being prepared and counseled by your physician um, can help make it easier to continue with your therapy um, and how to manage side effects.